Today I am going to be showing you how to make these little guys. Let's go. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Donna. This is my wonderland and if you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy it. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. If you're a returning subscriber, Thank you so much. Please make sure you hit the like button. It's a free way you can help my channel out. Sorry about the cars. It is warm today and I can't close my window. So I am going to be showing you how to make these little guys today. Now I saw this on another YouTube video, which I will link below, um, but I just thought they were adorable. And I thought these would make great little Christmas stocking stuffers for older children slash adults so my daughter is 21 she absolutely loves coffee used to work for starbucks and she also likes the octopuses that you can switch in and out to change the emotions so i thought these were kind of a great mix of those two things so if you have a coffee lover in the house they may well like these as well so i have made her a a angry one and a happy one and then I also made a sad one um, now the sad one is I don't know why I made it a lot bigger than the others um, and she wants three that are the same size so um, these two are fine I'm going to try and make another purple one that is a little bit smaller now I used the same crochet hook but I think I did too many um, too many stitches so I am going to talk you through um, as I make one um, so let's jump in I have got my thread I have got my crochet needles and I have got the black as well um, so we will get started for my first tutorial um, you can go and watch the other video she uh, showed you how to make them as well I do do them slightly different to how she put them together um, I didn't have any brown so she used brown to make the coffee I'm just going with it's black coffee there's no milk in it so and um, that's why I use black because that's what I had um, and the thread that I'm using is slightly different so for the thread I am using 100% cotton I think this gives a firmer base than some of the ones that are more wool like an acrylic so I can do a tighter thing on that so that is 100% cotton the black is actually a 50% cotton and acrylic mix because I just don't have black in the 100% um, cotton um, so that is a mix which is fine and then the hook that I am using is is my two and a half millimeter hook. So I'm gonna use that. I think that's what I did wrong, actually. I think I used my three and a half millimeter instead of my two for the purple one. So you can make different sizes by changing the um, crochet hook that you use or changing the thickness of the yarn that you use. Um, just be aware that obviously the bigger the crochet hook you go to the same, um, the bigger the crochet hook you go using the same yarn, the gaps are going to be bigger in it and you don't want the stuffing to be seen. So I do have some um, toy stuffing that I'm using. Um, you could use scraps if you've got scraps of stuff. You could stuff it with scraps, um, which is what this little bin is here. It's like all my sewing scraps and things like that. So you could use that for it. Um, but I am going to turn the camera down and I am going to walk you through what I'm going to do. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is create a magic loop of six. So I take my yarn in my hand here, take it over these two fingers and cross it. Take the crochet hook under and over. So we've got it under and over. Then around this and pull through so we've got one on the chain now so this is the magic circle that my fingers are around then I go in again and grab the yarn and then in again over and pull through so that is two now on there now this is the problem with the cotton yarn that I find really frustrating is that I've missed picking something up there so just take it out and do that do, do, do that one back through that one and then over pull it through so that's 
two now on my loop then I go under again pull through over pull through that's three under pull through over four uh, uh, uh. under pull through five under pull through over six okay so that is six that we have got on the magic loop now so we have the one two three four five six what I'm going to do is because that first one is like literally non-existent I'm going to do seven but I'm not going to use that first one for anything okay so I've got seven here and you can see the chevrons there okay so we've got one two three four five six chevrons and I'm not counting the first one because it's literally disappeared then you need to tighten the circle so we're just going to pull the end thread here and pull it around until it is almost in that circle position over. tighten it a little bit that way okay so then we have to join the round so I will then go in I'm not going to go in the very first one but you can see one two three four five six so this is the first chain that we are going into that stitch there so when we go in there I'm actually going to bring it up and through that to make a slip knot now I've got a ring so I have one on here and I'm going to chain one so that we can create a new circle and you've got to get all those threads this is the one thing with the cotton yarn that really frustrates me is the threads aren't together very well okay so then I'm going to make two stitches two single crochet into every single one of these oh she says okay so we go in here back in the one that we were just in that we just used to join at the round together and single crochet back in the same hole pull through single crochet then into the next hole single crochet into the next hole oh sorry same hole Hmm. What am I doing? Hold on. Hold on, she has gone wrong. Oh. She was doing the double crochet, there we go. Had too many loops on. So now we've got four. One, two, three, four. So you're just going to do that all the way round and I will meet you back at the end. So this is the last stitch, Ooh, which she didn't pick up properly. There we go. There we go. Okay, so this is the first full circle in our round. And then what I do is I grab this first stitch that we did so not the chain stitch but oh, show you there we have got the chain right there and then this is our first stitch so it's the first stitch that we're going to pick up and we're just going to do that slip stitch to join that row together and join it together so that is our first round 
For the second round, we are going to do a single into the first stitch and then a double into the second stitch. So going back in that one that we just slip stitched to create the round, we are going to do a single. So there's the single and then in the next one we're going to put two. So one, two and you might at this stage want to grab a um, stitch marker and just mark that first one because it starts to sort of look a little bit slipped in there so pop that in there you can close it up I don't tend to because I need to take it out too quickly so I just have it hanging out there so the next one we're going to do single the next one we're going to put two in then we're going to put one then two then one then two all the way back round to the beginning and I will meet you there bringing it through And it's very difficult with the cotton because you can literally just pick up one thread that doesn't belong. And I can see it, but I can't reach it, so I'm just gonna pull it out and do it again. There we go, that's better. Oh, no, sorry. Mm -mm. Slip stitch, so then just pull it through and then add one chain for the next line. So this one is gonna be our final round. And what we're gonna do is we are going to do um, two single crochets into the next two and then two single crochets into the same stitch. Two singles, then two into the same stitch, two singles and then two into the same stitch all the way around. So let me start it off, going straight back into that first one with a single, then into the next one with a single, then again add the stitch marker in, and then we're gonna do two into this next one, two single crochets, one, Two, then a single into the next one, then a single into the next one, and then two singles into the next one. And I'll meet you back round at the end. And now we're back at the beginning, we're just going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch. And we've joined the round. So this is the base of our coffee cup. Okay, so it's the same size, so that's a good start. So now we need to start building up the sides. And to do that, we're not gonna add any more stitches, we're just going to be doing a single crochet into each stitch. But instead of doing it through both loops, so instead of doing it across the chevron like that, which is what we've been doing all the way around, we're just gonna pick up the back loop there. Okay, so we're gonna do it into the first stitch and we're just gonna do a single crochet in there. And then we're gonna pick up the second into the back loop there, into the back loop there, into the back loop there. And this is just going to create this kind of rim at the bottom here like you get on your teacups when you um, look at them they've got a, a defined outer edge 
and that's what that's going to create. So you're just going to go around and complete the whole row. I'm going to just pop my stitch marker back in there. This one is pretty obvious, but it gets less obvious on the next one. So I'm just going to do that so that I know where I am. And again, single crochet into the back loop all the way around and I will meet you at the end of the row. And here we are back at the beginning. This is our chain stitch. So I'm just going to do a slip stitch into this one fully. So going through both loops, front and back, come through and slip stitch that. So you can already see that it's starting to curl up. Well, actually it's going to be the other way around because this, what is facing you guys, is the bottom of the cup here. So we want it to curve around the other way. And we are going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows to create this height in cup. So seven rows and we're just going to be going around doing single crochet through both loops as we have been doing already. So through both loops, pulling through, yarn over, and pull through both loops, single crochet, through both loops, through both loops, pull the yarn through, over, single crochet. And we're just gonna continue that all the way round for seven rows. So I will meet you back here after seven rows. Okay guys, so seventh row is complete. So I've just done that last slip stitch there. Pull that through, tighten. We don't need a lot of excess on that. So then we are going to snip. Pull that out and there is our coffee cup base. So that is it all the way around. Okay, so that is the base done. Next, I am going to do the little handle. So again, we are going to use the same thread. So again, over the two fingers and cross, and then just create a slip knot there. Okay, so the way I do a chain is I always, all the threads, I hold the tail in my back two fingers here, which just creates that little bit of stability because when you haven't got, I just sort of hold it. Yeah, hold it between those first two so I can get the first one and then I hold it between my second finger and thumb. And then we're gonna chain one, chain two, chain three, chain four, four, chain five, chain six, chain seven, chain eight, then we're moving up, chain nine and chain ten. Now I've kept those quite tight because I want the handle to be quite sturdy. Like you can see this one, it kind of holds its shape and so if it's more loose then it might drop down and not kind of sit in that shape as well. And then all we're gonna do is slip stitch down one side. So we don't go into the first um, stitch there, we go into the second and then we just pull the thread through and then through that first loop, so creating a slip stitch. And then into the next one, pull through, pull through that stitch there. So this bit is a bit fiddly. Through the stitch, pull through, and then through that stitch. I'm trying to keep them quite tight. I don't want it to get too loose. 
No loosey gooseys. Through and then through the stitch. And there we go. So that is now our tea, tea cup, coffee cup handle, just like that. So I'm going to pull quite a bit of thread through here because I use this thread to sew the handle on. So just going to pull about that much through and make sure I'm pulling the, snipping the right thread off. Pull that out, pull that tight. So there is my little handle. Okay, so I tend to use it that way because it matches then this kind of shape rather than using it that way that's got the chevrons. On it but you can do whichever you like I'll sew that on at the end and then the next thing we need to do is to create the black part for the top now I don't actually level up I do make this more of a spiral um, this is slightly thicker because it is the acrylic and cotton so but it is easier to work with so as you can see Let's move that out of the way. It is thicker than the pure cotton, um, so I can be a bit tighter with this. So again, we're going to create a magic loop. So we go yarn across your two fingers, hold it together, go over and across. So you've got that cross there. Then you put your needle hook underneath the back thread here and then pull that loop through. So you've got the loop on your hook, you bring it up to the front side. I'm going to call this the part next to my nails is the front side and then you're going to lay it across that loop so you can put this yarn over the loop and then pull it up to create one stitch. Now we're going to do eight on this magic circle. So we go under the loop, pull through and then we lift it up and pull through both. So I'm going to say that that is stitch one there. I'm going to put my marker in it so you can see because black is is hard to work with, guys. So if you can get brown, that will be slightly easier to work with for you for this part. Um, it's not the easiest to work with. So that's one. And the last one is eight. And again, like we did with the other one, we're just going to, I just like to try and hold the thread from the main ball with the stitch and then you're pulling that tail round nice and tight. And then we are going to start the journey around. So we are going to go through both front and back loops, if you can find them. So there is our first stitch, just taking the stitch marker out of it. One, yarn over, pull through. Don't, oh, I've messed this up because I've started using the outer rather than the inner. 
Um, so for those of you who are new to knitting and um, needle craft, when you get your ball of wool, you want to try and find the end that is inside the center because that just pulls out really nicely. Whereas the one on the outside goes over and around, over and around, over and around the ball, which means that your ball is just flailing about all over the place. So if you can find the end in the middle, it is a much easier end to work with. So there is a top tip if you are new to needle craft. If you're not, then you're like, duh, Donna. <laughs> so now we have done that first one. Let me put my stitch marker back in there so you can see that first stitch of the next row. And what I am doing is I'm going round one, two, three, four times. One, two, three, four times I believe so let's see where we get to it's really just so that we can fill this top part here okay so what we're going to do from here is we are going to increase into every stitch so I've done one in that first stitch so I'm going to go back through like I say this is why brown is easier because you can see better what you're doing so that's two in there then into the next stitch and we're going to do two single crochets into there and we're going to do that in every stitch until we get back to the beginning so instead of eight stitches we should have 16 in the round now we are back to that beginning stitch again so we are going to, for this next row, we are going to single crochet, then increase, put in two in the next one, then single crochet, and increase, and single crochet, and increase. So one stitch into the first stitch, two stitches into the second stitch, one stitch, two stitches, one stitch, two stitches. So I've just put one stitch in that first stitch there. And then I am going to go into the second stitch and do the increase. So one crochet, single crochet, sorry, and two, and then just one on its own. And then we're gonna do the same for the next row just trying to fill up this space here. And then as we get to the end of this row, let me check it again. And I think we might be okay there actually. I might need to go around a little bit further, I think, just do half a row more. Um, and I'm going to do it so that I'm going to do like we did on the bottom where I'm gonna do two singles, one, two, then I'm gonna put two singles into the same stitch, one, Two, and I'm just going to do that halfway round. Just check. Yeah, that's it's better. Okay, so with this last one, we're just going to join it on to the band with a slip stitch so it kind of melds in. So we're going to just go into that next stitch, pull up through, and then go through the loop. I haven't got all of it on. Do, do, do. pull it through and then I'm going to pull this through okay and then I'm just going to cut that off and then we have the body of the cup we've got the coffee section and we've got the handle ready to go and next stage is to do the face so the next thing we are going to do is the face so we need to 
thread some black on here. So I'm going to do it all with wool. If you watch the video of the um, lady who I got the idea from, she uses some plastic eyes. Um, I'm on a reduce, reuse, recycle thing where I don't want to be using plastic if I don't need it. Um, so I use the join line here where I was changing all my rows. That's going to be where my handle gets sewn in and I like the handle on this side. So this is where I'm going to do the face and it will match this one here. And I am going to be doing the sad face on this one. So I do the eyes first and I'm going to do them around the middle. So we're about three rows down. So I'm going to go in here first, pull it through. And then what I actually do for the eyes is I do a French knot. So what you need to do is place, I'm going to hold the thread back there. I'm going to leave a little bit more actually, so I've got a bit to knot with. So then I can hold it a bit easier. Okay. So hold the needle against the work at a 90 degree angle, wrap the thread around twice, and then I kind of clasp it here and then you need to insert the needle not in exactly the same hole but right next to it and then you're going to pull that through slowly to get your French knot so try and hold the original thread down so that doesn't pull through just pull 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 and then we have a knot there for the eye. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to probably come to here. I think is a good spot. Pull that through. And again, I'm going to do it. Needle one, two. And then I'm going to take it down right next to it, not into the same hole, but right next to it. And then gently pull that through all the way. And then we've got two knots. So now we have our eyes. Now to make the sad face, we do a mix of the angry face and the happy face. So We've got the angry face here, and as you can see, we've got a little V mouth going down, and the eyebrows are going down towards the center. Um, in the happy face, we've got the V going up, and then we've got the eyebrows going up in the center, rather than down to the center. So we do a mix of these for the sad face. So we're gonna do the mouth of the angry face, but the eyebrows of the happy face to create that. So we need to come up in the middle of the eyes. And then we're gonna go down a slight angle. And then I'm going to go across. And then back down that same one there. So I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to come back up. It's not enough of an angle. It's the other side. Let's try again. I think this hole is going to be too far over, but we will try. Oh, actually, no, that's fine. Okay, so we've got the sad, sad mouth, we've got the eyes, and then we're going to do the happy eyebrows. So come up above the eye, and then down to the side of the eye, to create that there and then we're going to do the same at the other side you have to try and match it up as well as you can and 
down. Sometimes the stitches line up really well, sometimes they don't. So there we go, there is our sad face. And then all I'm gonna do is take the tail from the beginning and I'm just gonna put a knot in it so I can cut off this excess. Not pulling too much because I don't wanna distort the face just enough so I can then cut this and there we have our face so the next thing I'm going to do is to sew the coffee part on so what I do for this is I think I probably have enough thread left on here for it so you get your thread on your needle and then you're gonna go what I have been doing is I've been going up through just one loop so the outside loop of all these stitches go up and then on the coffee cup going down on this stitch so if you look around the edge here we've got the top line which is the top stitch that sits along here I'm not going into that I'm going into these downward these sort of horizontal lines here that go all the way around so that's what I'm using to join the coffee part on so I'm just going to pick up one of those stitches it through and we are just going to do that about three quarters of the way round because you want to leave an opening so you can put the stuffing in so I will go round and I will meet you back here okay so I have got a opening there about a quarter of it so I'm now going to get my stuffing and we're going to stuff this little fella Okay, so this is actually leftover from the oven mitts stroke pot holder things that I made um, for Christmas. So I put this into the toy stuffing bag because it's, it's, you know, the wadding stuff. So I'm just going to use some of this to stuff this little fella. So let's see. You don't want to overstuff because then you won't sit flat. So. so I think, yeah, I think this is good for this one. I'm happy with that level of stuffing. So I'm just going to now close up the hole, finish sewing that off, and then we will put the handle on. I just put it right through to the bottom. Tie a little knot. bit of a pull cut it off and then when you flatten it back out it is gone magic so that is the top done now we've just got to sew the handle on so as I said earlier I've left this long thread so that I could use that for the sewing so just need to put the thread on the darning needle And then the way I do it is I line it up to where I want it to be. And I find a stitch to go through here. I'm just 
pull that up. Then I'm going to go back in at the same place and I'm going to go straight up to where I want the top of the handle to be. And then I am going to pick up corner point here. slightly to where I want the other side of the handle to be sewn on. my work and then I'm going to go straight down to come out the bottom here next to where I want to have the handle finished. Now because of the wadding that I've used because it was a sheet is making it a little bit harder to wiggle through it because it's not the sharpest of needles. So you might have to wiggle around a little bit. Okay, then before I put this last one on, I just make sure the position of it is okay and I'm happy with that, which I am. So then I'm just gonna pick up the opposite corner. Oh, sorry, this corner that I haven't yet sewn down. And I'm going to go back into my work, just under a stitch like that, to pull that in tight so the handle is on. And then I am just going to go round that stitch again, create a knot. this end in. There we go. So there we go. There we have a sad coffee. All completed to go with the angry coffee and the happy coffee. And they are all relatively the same size. Yay! So that is it guys. We have made our little coffees. I hope that that tutorial helped you to be able to see that it's really simple and you could make these just as easily as I do. I will have down below links to everything that I've used in this tutorial. So if you want to get started, you can get started and have everything to hand. She did use different yarn to me. So hers are a little bit different. I think hers are smaller though, I don't know how. <laughs> um, but you can make different sizes as you saw. My, my sad one over here is a little bit bigger than the others. So you can make different sizes. They'll make great stocking stuffers for your older teens um, and young adults. Uh, and I do say young adults guys because we still have stockings in this house. My daughter, it's a tradition for us. We open our stockings on our on my bed um, on Christmas morning together and if I didn't do her a stocking I think she'd be very upset so these would make a great little stocking stuffer if you're going to give it a go then let me know in the comments below I would love to see your creations on Instagram so please tag me at Donna Eid 81 um, and I would love to connect with you over there 
Um, if you've got any questions, then please drop them below. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up so that I know to make more like this for you. Um, if you are new, please hit subscribe and that notification bell if you don't want to miss when I next upload. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.